first, I want to thank our Armando and the Raven Pack team. Obviously, Peter, we, we've become fast friends over the last year or two, but more than friends, have a tremendous amount of respect for his organization, uh, the history, the track record, and the efficacy by which they produce data uh, and how they carry themselves. So uh, since I am the last speaker, maybe I could ask for a round of applause for uh, Armando and the, and the Raven Pack uh, team today putting together the conference. Um, and uh, I'm very flattered to be asked to speak today with such an esteemed um, group of speakers. I listened to many of you today in some of your best universities. Um, and additionally, and not least of which, uh, London is my favorite city outside of a provincial New York. So uh, thank you for having me here today. Uh, always love visiting. So, so with that, um, let, let's hop right in. We're going to make it less than 10 minutes. But I, I did want to gauge the audience since it's late in the day and get the blood flowing a little bit. How many of you all are mostly affiliated with systematic trading strategies rather than discretionary? If I could see a show of hands, please. And on the discretionary side? Okay, great. So, so for context, uh, I'm not um, a data scientist, I'm not an engineer, I've never taken a CS class uh, in my life. I, I manage a sales group at Jefferies, which is a global investment bank based out of New York, but also with a formidable office here in London as well as Asia and throughout the world. Um, I did see and, and had the opportunity to see an explosion of data usage over the last 24 to 36 months. Clearly Raven Pack and their team saw it much earlier, as did many of you here. Uh, but having a, a front row seat at some of the largest uh, mutual funds and hedge funds globally, we saw this inflection two or three years ago, which is basically the use of data not strictly relegated to the systematic strategies, but also to the discretionary side. So um, with that, uh, I can give you some context. Over the last year and a half, uh, as we've traveled, uh, we've written a couple of theme pieces on the space and presented at this point uh, to over uh, 120 uh, fund managers, both systematic and discretionary, uh, mutual fund and hedge fund alike, um, both domestically in the U.S. and internationally, Europe and Asia. So we feel like we have a, a pretty good sample set for the community right now. Um, and we'll go through some observations and then uh, happy to take questions as well. So some of this is fairly elementary, but I, I think it's important to know why do we care about big data now since you're mostly a systematic community? I think you know what's happened in the last four or five years is really the, uh, the advancement and enhancement of... Um, Come on, Armando, you're supposed to cue me for that. Um, well, enhanced semis, right? So, so semis have unlocked all of this. There's been tons of large amounts and vast amounts of data. We've even had software for quite some time. So what's changed? It's the advancement of semis. It's not by accident that we've seen the growth of NVIDIA and their stock performance, AMD as well, and other names that are pure plays in Asia over this time. They're secular, it's not cyclical, it's not, it's not a coincidence. Uh, what are some, I think, observations in the marketplace? Again, typically, you all know this, you've experienced some um, rotation of active into passive, which has been dramatic, and um, crowding of strategies, both on the discretionary side and we saw in the back half of last year on the systematic side as well. And what does that all lead to? It, looks, it leads for what we've always had, but even more keenly, a constant focus on alpha generating activities. Uh, as a direct byproduct of that, what did we see? We saw the discretionary community start to come out and really in great form, both on multi-managers, which are more common, but also on a single manager platforms, start to experiment with vast amounts of data, both small and, uh, and large. So um, Moneyball, a favorite of mine, a uh, book and the movie, uh, evolve um, or adapt and die, uh, or, or die. So we're just giving something illustrative here. Uh, discretionary, we think today, uh, the investment community, two-thirds is discretionary, a very small sliver is systematic, and an even smaller sliver is quantumental. What we see probably two to five years out is an inversion of the discretionary and the quantumental. We see it happening right now in real time at an asymptotic pace. Uh, there are very few um, discretionary managers right now uh, that are not using data in some form, whether it's traditional, price volume, or alternative, alternative data as well. On the systematic side, we expect it to shrink very simply due to economies of scale. We saw a mass amount of spin-offs over the last 36, 48 months. 
if you've really taken stock of those spinoffs, most of them have gone away, been folded back in. These are technology companies at their essence, and any paradigm history has proven that uh, the CapEx is really, in, in, in addition to, to uh, innovation, is really a lead indicator or portender of how things end up. So this is how we think um, the community will look only a year or two out. <coughs> Pardon me. Relevant market themes. I think you know most of these. I'm going to call out uh, two or three. One, particularly because uh, you're a systematic-led community, the return of alpha capture. It's massive. It's happening right now in great amounts. It really took on shape eight or ten years ago. Um, it went away during the market um, kind of correction in 08 and 09. What we've seen firsthand with our clients in the last 18 months is a massive growth in alpha capture, again, not just on the systematic side, but on the discretionary side as well. And we can talk about that, but, but um, it's really worth calling out to follow. Why? Ultimately, when it all boils down to it, what is alpha capture? It's a pure and unique data signal. No different than alternative data um, uh, sources. And the more that you're a member of the alpha capture community, you can assure yourself of one thing besides any other alternative data set. It is unique by virtue of your counterparty and who's participating on it. That's interesting and exciting. We've seen that growth. Mutual fund adoption, um, really inflected in the last year. Been laggards historically in a lot of different areas within the industry. Last year, we saw a massive ramp in mutual fund adoption hiring data scientists. Um, I'm going to pick up the pace, but it's, it's interesting and, and um, it's worth noting. Uh, and that's, you know, we've seen the growth for uh, local, local funds here like uh, Schroeder's and Lansdowne, uh, JP Morgan, just to name a few. Um, two quotes that I want to uh, just highlight. One, you, when you think of um, data science, uh, data scientists, you typically, most of the world, except for systematic, think of fast day trading, either high frequency or equity product traders. Um, <clears throat> what we saw, we thought, is two watershed quotes and events in time. So Lawrence Fink, principal of BlackRock, whose equity business is fairly de minimis in nature in terms of what moves the needle, mostly credit-led, talking about how data science and data analytics will lead the firm over the next three to five and ten years. They hired multiple data scientists, not just located in the U.S. It's a seminal event, and he clearly was not re referring solely to the BGI business or the systematic business based uh, out west. It likely portended the restructuring of the equity business on the act active side, if you look at the time period, less than a year later. So these are really interesting things to think about, counterintuitive of the um, systematic or equity uh, bucket that's entirely uh, data-centric. Two, Dan Loeb. Uh, third point, if I asked a group around here or in any, any area, who is the asset class or the type of investor least likely to adopt data science a year ago, people would basically say fixed income and activism, right? Bottoms up, situational, <clears throat> uh, very short term. Yet, uh, Dan Lowe makes a splash and hires what we think is one of the most talented data scientists from a systematic firm, not in isolation as a one-off to check the box, but as a systematic hire to build a team around because he believes there are KPIs that could be gleaned that are unique that help not only his activist business, but his macro business, his fixed income business. I would also highlight um, um, the recent uh, Lowe's activism with D.E. Shaw, if you look at an article a couple of weeks ago, it's the first time that I've seen an activist actually uh, present to a board, not just research and their own data, but alternative data. They presented satellite imagery to a board during a proxy fight. So think about that for a moment and, and extrapolate out what alternative data could mean you know, in the future, not just uh, systematic, not just discretionary, but fixed income, macro, activism. The point is, it's not relegated to any one bucket, it's much more broad. So quickly, um, I'm gonna pump our own gas a little bit with the Jeffries um, survey we did. We think it's incredibly unique. Uh, the surveys we've seen alter on alternative data used here to four have been mostly tops down by third parties with, with little to no relationships with data scientists. <clears throat> Through Jeffries' unique relationships, the meetings we've had, uh, our 20 year operating history with a lot of these individuals, we were able to have specific interviews with the 50 or so most progressive uses of data uh, in all regions, at all accounts, at all levels. 
These were individuals. They did phone conversations with us upwards of an hour. Uh, we took these notes and we put together a statistical summary of what we found. So one really interesting point, top objectives for acquiring data sets. Uh, common misconception, idea generation, right? Uh, how do I find ideas? That's obviously intuitive in the systematic community, on the discretionary side, even more so. When in fact, 90% uh, of, um, of respondents talk that it's more about enhancement of the investment process. It, it's fairly underwhelming what percent of discretionary managers are using data for idea generation right now. Second page. Top data science goals. Again, improving the process rather than frontier data sets. If you ask people, uh, typically, why are you looking for data sets, why are you an alternative data sets, is to find one data set, the holy grail, that continuously makes you money. And I think what's interesting is, um, is uh, in looking at this, you realize that's not the case at all, that only 20% of respondents are really looking for an incredibly unique data set. We also found that a fairly limited amount of them um, are using e exclusivity of any type at this stage. Next slide. Again, we saw an inflection last year. Uh, we think there were more data scientists hired last calendar year than in the five years previously combined. Uh, notwithstanding that, almost half the community uh, still has what we call a shared de uh, de data lead rather than a dedicated data lead. Dedicated data lead we define as a pure place, someone whose job full-time it is to be a data scientist. The majority of the community, <clears throat> and again, to give you the sense of the sample set to impress upon you, these are the most progressive purchasers and users of data globally. 60% still have shared data leads. What's interesting, however, if you look to the pie to the right, is about half of those are focused on hiring a dedicated data lead in the next six to 12 months. Ergo, 90% of the most progressive players uh, will have dedicated data leads in the next year. Um, one other interesting data point, I mean, you all can look at the slides down on the left, but I thought it was interesting with streamlined organizations that have massive infrastructure, what they call these data leads varied with 20 different titles among 50 people. It gives you a sense a bit for the diaspora and how fluid the situation is among the data community, both on the discretionary side and the systematic alike. Not only the, the names and the titles, but the reporting lines varied greatly as well. Um, next data slide, again, just perceived notions. Number of alternative data sets, again, for the most progressive, progressive data users, only 20% had upwards of 80 or 100 data sets that are being used, right? One would think it's a lot more, both on the systematic and the multi-manager discretionary community of scale, where we hear about individuals of 40 and 50 and 60 people and massive budgets. <clears throat> What's equally interesting and surprising is 20% of the most progressive users of data are using less than 12 data sets. What does that tell us? It tells us, again, we're in the early stages as much as Many investors and allocators think data science is trite, we're in the eighth inning. That alone, the 20% are using a dozen or more data sets, I think speaks to, to quite a bit of that. Uh, the holy grail in, in the middle, I think worth pointing out, we're seeing a massive evolution of single data set use to multi-variable uh, and multi-data set use. Um, last slide, just kind of tongue in cheek before we go into our uh, round table. Um, we kind of all live in our own worlds of systematic discretionary investing. Uh, not only has there been an explosion on our side uh, of the fence in terms of use of data and data scientists, this is a very small smattering of corporates that are leaders in the world that are hiring dedicated data scientists. If you really search for it now, it's massive. What are we thinking? We think it's interesting about how these corporates, <coughs> pardon me, will key off of potential investor questions going forward vis-a-vis -vis IR, vis-a-vis -vis C-level. <clears throat> we think it's interesting how they will use data sets to run their businesses, such as Under Armour, ones that are less obvious, like Halliburton and Schlumberger, GE for maintenance and other things. And one could theorize, and it's all up to you, that over time, that the market will ascribe a greater premium or valuation to the corporates that are more serious and focused on data science and how to optimize their business and a discount to those who don't much like they will, we think, in the community of investors and frankly the sell side as well. So it's a paradigm that is shifting both the buy side, 
the sell side and the corporate side alike. Um, that's all I really have, Armando, if we want to kind of roll up into uh, Fireside. This is Raven Pack.